the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel for this Sunday comes from the 15th chapter of St. Matthew. And to be expected, this Gospel passage deals with this relationship between Israel and the foreigners, the Gentiles, the outsiders. In the first reading, we see this consoling vision of Isaiah where the foreigners would be part of the community that worships God and their sacrifices will not be turned down by God. God will accept their sacrifices if they truly serve God, if they follow the covenant, the covenant that is at the core of Israel. So we see how Israel was really meant for a universal purpose. God called Israel as His special people, not to be secluded from the rest of humanity, but through Israel, the whole world, the whole of humanity may get to know God so that they, with Israel, would worship the one God. So this is a an example of Israel receiving a unique, unique gift, but it should not be kept to itself. The gift given to Israel has a universal scope. In the second reading, St. Paul deals with the same reality. He, in a way, laments the non-acceptance by Israel of Jesus Christ. But even in this so-called disobedience, God can still work through the disobedience of Israel, according to St. Paul, the foreigners, the Gentiles, received the mercy of God. When Israel did not accept Jesus, the church turned to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles got to know God in Jesus Christ. So, the term people of God still remains with Israel. But now we know that Israel is people of God in order to create for God a bigger, a wider people of God, including the Gentiles. This was part of the experience of Jesus in His mission. Remember that Jesus was a Jew and He grew up in the tradition of the Jewish people. He was through and through a member of the chosen people, Israel. But at the same time, as the one sent by the Father to fulfill the plan of salvation, Jesus must also fulfill the universal scope of the saving plan of God. And the episode for today captures this drama, inter interior drama, in Jesus' mission. A Canaanite woman approached Jesus. Canaanite, a foreigner, someone who does not belong 
to Israel, the chosen people. And she came to Jesus first as a helpless, loving mother. Her daughter was sick and she needed help. Please, please have pity on me. My daughter is terribly troubled by a demon. Any mother, any parent, any father would go to anyone in order to have a child, one son or one's daughter, healed again. So here in the Canaanite woman, we hear the universal call, the cry of all the parents on behalf of their children. This is not just a cry of a Canaanite. And the Israelite mothers were not the only ones who need help. This is a universal cry. Heal my daughter. But this woman also approaches Jesus bearing some faith. She addresses Jesus as Lord, son of David, have pity on me. Implied here is a faith, a belief that this man, Jesus, who comes from the line of David, can do something, can drive out demons. Of course, the reputation of Jesus must have reached this woman already. But for her to somehow believe in that was already grace. Oh, we are already seeing how a, a foreigner, someone who does not belong to God's chosen people, could believe in someone sent by God. Now, the disciples, the disciples told Jesus, no, we should let this woman go. She's creating a lot of noise. She's running after us, shouting, probably at the top of her voice. So we better silence her, get rid of her. Now, Jesus, in a calm manner, addressed the woman. And look at how Jesus perceived his mission. My mission is only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. According to Bible scholars, Jesus, as a human being, growing up in the tradition of Israel, and also with a sense of mission, probably knew that his mission was for the renewal of the people Israel. And not bad at all. This is God's chosen people. It needs to be called back to God, to be faithful to God. And so he perceived his mission primarily to the lost sheep of Israel. But the woman persisted. This foreigner persisted. No, please, please help me. And look, Jesus was quite stern. Jesus said, it is not right to take the food of sons and daughters and throw it to the dogs. This foreigner was compared to a dog. You do not even belong to the house. You are, you are supposed to be outside the house. You are not part of the family, the sons and daughters. I am sent to the sons and daughters. So I should feed them first, not the dogs. But look at this woman in her helplessness and also love for her daughter and faith in Jesus said, But please, Lord, even the dogs eat the leavings that fall from their master's table. And this statement disarmed Jesus. Jesus saw that faith was not confined to Israel. Outside of Israel, faith could be found. Outside of Israel, grace is at work. So the vocation of Israel as God's chosen people, as a community of faith, in the work of grace, this vocation is open to others. And so Jesus saw how faith could be present outside of Israel, he affirms this woman, you have great faith, your wish will come to pass. Dear brothers and sisters, I've been repeating this. 
the vocation of Israel remains intact. But every gift or vocation is not to be enjoyed only by the one to whom the gift or calling is given. Every gift from God, as we learn from Israel, is to be shared with others. Your gift has a universal import. So, dear brothers and sisters, I am inviting you. Uh, identify your gifts, no? whatever that is. And that gift is not to be used only for your Huh? For your uh, benefit, every gift has a universal significance. Okay? And those of us in the church, sometimes we fragmentize ourselves. This is my gift, that is your gift. And we fail even within the church to share our gifts for the good of all, for the common good. No? And so this, and, and how do we expect ecumenism and inter-religious dialogue to prosper when even within the church, our gifts are hoarded and we fail to learn from Israel that the calling of God is not just for us to develop ourselves or our small groups, but for the wider public. Uh, last July, the priests of the Diocese of Emus had an overnight recollection. And it was facilitated by a group of lay people, lay people from Cavite, our formation team for the basic ecclesial communities. This group of lay people, when they were told that they would facilitate the, uh, the recollection of the priests, they trembled in fear. Will we be accepted? And our gifts, our gifts meager compared to the gifts and the stature of the priests. They even said, oh, our gifts and talents are only for our fellow lay people. Pang barangay lang kami, hindi kami pang pari. No? But we said, no, your gift is for all, even for priests. And the recollection went well, went well. And, the, and even the priests appreciated. For me, it was an experience. Everyone there was gifted. But the gift is not meant only for myself. I will not protect it for myself or for my group. It is to be shared to all for the common good. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.